Good morning, Sharon. It's morning out in Southern California. It's afternoon here, but welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm really uh, excited to be here. It's going to be fun. It is. And I want to confess up front, I am a little bit jealous. And when I say a little bit, I really mean more than a little bit, like a lot jealous <laughs> of your Southern California weather and the patterns for here. This is May and April lasted about 53 days and it was cold and rainy and windy the whole time. And then all of a sudden we were setting heat records overnight. So yeah, consistent, yeah. nice perfect temperature seems like a, a, a the way to go. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for, for, for what you're dealing with weather-wise, for sure. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm originally from New York, so believe me, I get the, the crazy weather and the cold and, you know, all of the stuff that comes along with actual weather. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. Yeah, where I am, it's, it tends to be pretty nice most days. So I can't really complain about the weather. So maybe I can package some and send it to you. <laughs> that would be fantastic. And maybe for all of the listeners too, they could contact yep. you and you could send them a little nice <laughs> Just, weather. That would be amazing. You're the best. <laughs> so Sharon, you've let you, as you said, you live out in Southern California. You have a couple of kids. One is yep. out of college and another one is still finishing college. Can you tell yep. us a little bit about your perfect treasures that you have? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, they're the best. Are you kidding? Um, they are, uh, one is, has finished college. Um, and one, as you said, is, uh, still has another year to go after this one finishes up. He's finishing up his junior year. Um, they are, you know, they are the best. Um, I love them. They also make me completely crazy because, you know, they're my kids and I'm a parent and that's what parenting is all about, right? It's about loving your kids more than anything in the world and also knowing that they can make you absolutely crazy and that it makes life chaotic and interesting and fun and challenging and all of the things. Um, and you wouldn't trade a second of any of it. And that's how I feel about my kids. I, I love them with all my heart. Love it. <laughs> but things really changed for you when you were ready to send your first one off to college. Oh, yeah. So... Um, that was a very challenging time for me um, because when you are used to having your children in your house and much of your life revolving around them and their needs and, you know, what their activities are and, and what they're going to eat and, you know, all the things, um, you know, testing for college, everything. Um, that's, you know, what you think about constantly. And not that I don't think about them constantly now that they're in college, but when my oldest was getting ready to go to college and all of a sudden I realized she was no longer going to be living under my roof. Um, that was incredibly emotional. Uh, you know, I didn't know what I was, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what it was going to mean for her. I didn't know what it was going to mean for my son, who is now going to be home with me and his dad and all of the attention thrust upon him and you know, what it, what it was going to mean for me, what it was going to mean for my husband. I mean, there were just so many unknowns. Was she going to be happy? Was she going to remember all the lessons that I spent, you know, and my husband spent teaching her about drugs and sex and studying and laundry and, and everything, it's safety, every, everything that matters, right? And, um, you know, I think that for me and what often happens is this period of time coincides with midlife, which is so unfair because both of those on their own can be incredibly challenging. Mm -hmm. So having them happen at the same time is just really messed up as far as I'm concerned, but, <laughs> but that's how it is. No one asked me. <laughs> and I love that you handled it just like everybody else does. You wrote a best-selling book, created a website and reinvented yourself. <laughs> You know, I, I, I thank you for, for saying that. I think that everybody has to find a way that works for them to get through 
everything in life, right? Whatever it is that affects you, you got to figure out a way how you're going to deal with it. And I knew that I just had so much emotion. I had so much going on in my head. I so much that I thought about and that I worried about, that I was excited about, that I saw around me. My friends were acting completely cuckoo, just like I was feeling. And the conversations that I were having were hysterical. I mean, I had friends who actually were doing things like, you know, putting together collages and they were in like, you know, 90 of the 95 pictures that they were sending their kid off to college with. And in my head, I was like, well, that just sounds kind of over the top, but okay. And you're trying to figure out, but, but not in a judgment way, in a like, right. huh, should I be doing that? Or is there anything normal about that? Or how's your kid going to react to that? I mean, just... There's so much emotion. And I don't know that there is a right or a wrong way for anything. I just know what I did and what I saw. And I think sometimes I handled things really well and sometimes maybe not so much. Um, and I think that's because I'm human as are were my friends around me that were acting out in crazy ways too. And um, I had all this emotion. And so the bottom line is I knew I was going to have to do something with that energy and I didn't set out to do anything specific. What I did was my husband and I dropped our daughter off at college. We went home. I woke up super early the next day because I just couldn't sleep. And I had a lot on my mind that I just needed to kind of get out. And I sat down at my computer and I truly just started typing all these things that I was thinking and feeling. And it felt good. And I spent you know, a long time just getting it all out. And eventually was like, huh, maybe there's something here. Maybe, maybe there's a, maybe there's a book in this, but I, I had a, um, a college professor who always said, show me, don't tell me. And mm -hmm. that's always been something kind of sitting on my shoulder and my background is in education. So I, I really have always liked that. And I, um, I had an idea for showing what I was feeling in kind of a fun bullet point kind of way. And that became illustrations that in the book are do's and don'ts on how you should behave when you're sending your kid to college. And the do's are about what you should be doing. And the don'ts are the ways that I and others around me actually behaved when we sent our kids off to college. And, um, you know, it was, it was truly around that period of time. It was preparing your kid for college to dropping them off in the dorms to returning home without them because it was that period of time where I was at my biggest um, emotional angst. <laughs> and I had a lot to say about what was going on during that time. Having experienced some of this midlife chaos, mm -hmm. I can certainly understand how it is even more complicated. Everything that happens, well, I'm just gonna put it this way. I was so hot and I was so angry for about a certain stretch of time. All I wanted to do was to cuss and to just strip off clothes. And as a pastor, you know, that, yeah. those options weren't really available for me. Right. So much of the time. <laughs> And not just uniquely me, but for a lot of us, you know, just going off on a streak of profanity and stripping down just isn't among the most acceptable options. <laughs> so keeping that all together and navigating life, it's challenging. Yes. Let alone another emotional upheaval that goes along with it, like putting a kid in college. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um you know, so I'm sure that you have experienced many of those similar thoughts where what you are thinking on the inside is different than the way you can be behaving on the outside. Inside, you might have been pulling off your jacket because you were so darn hot, but you can't do it. So instead, you sit there smiling and you keep your jacket on and you wipe away the sweat, and <laughs> you, you know, and you try to keep your anger, you know, or sadness sometimes for me or whatever it was in check and behave appropriately for whatever situation you're in. And it's not always so easy. It's not always so easy. Oh, no. So, 
you know, as you know, I have, uh, I have an Instagram account. Oh my um, goodness. This Instagram account. If you are listening, you have to check out this account. You have to check it out. Tell us your handle where we can find it. So thank you for saying that it's, um, it's at miserable moms. And the Instagram account uses those same characters that I used in the book um, to show all midlife stuff. Uh, you know, all the stuff that I deal with, all the stuff that my friends deal with, um, the categories that I tend to address are questionable parenting. So that's everything parenting as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, midlife unfiltered, which is things like wrinkles and sagging boobs and the fact that my husband and I have been living in the same house for I don't even know how many years and he still doesn't know where we keep the forks and <laughs> we're sitting in traffic and the person in front of you won't go when the light turns green and it makes you crazy and all things midlife um and then I have a section that I deal with which is uh, or a lot a topic that I deal with which is starvation and torture which of course is the whole diet and exercise thing and then holiday havoc because nothing says being a midlife mom like having to deal with all of the holidays. So I address all of these topics and I try to do it, you know, through my funny illustrations. Um, and I try to say something about what makes me tick or what I see around me or what makes us human or what we, you know, have in common uh, on a daily basis. And I have to say, the first time I went to your Instagram account, I was laughing so hard and I wanted to laugh and comment on everything. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to think I'm, I'm just a stalker here. I got to moderate myself a little bit, but you like that interaction. In your Love account. it. Love it. It's always so funny to me and I don't know what it is. I think it's, it's, you know, the younger generation knows how to handle all of this, like what's appropriate, like how much they should comment on things or not comment on things. And it's so funny because I get that, what you just said very often, or I will have like friends take a snapshot of a post that I did and text it back to me with a comment about like what they thought was <laughs> funny or how it made them feel or whatever. And I'm like, just you can just text it like that's okay that's like what social media is but it's fine and I totally get it but it makes me happy to know that you felt that way that you scrolled through and that you you laughed out loud and and that you could relate to a lot of it so okay. I'm glad to hear that thank you and please feel free to comment if you're comfortable doing so and if not I'll know that you're there <laughs> <laughs> I to tell you about my very first hot flash okay so I was in the middle of a sermon and that's a great time for it, by the it way. It was perfect. Oh my. Let me tell you, <laughs> I got so hot. My glasses fogged up and I couldn't, I couldn't see anybody. I don't preach from a manuscript, but I do have some notes there and oh my goodness, I didn't know what was happening. It was like. You know, when they do a, a, a countdown for a rocket launch, you got the, all right, we're committed to launch and the sequence has begun and the counter is going. That's what it felt like. It's like, okay, something is happening in my core and I don't think I can stop it. I think I'm kind of past this point of uh, controlling this heat missile that's inside of me and I'm getting very hot. I can't see and I just want to start cursing and whipping clothes off. And again, neither appropriate in the time and the context. But the funny part was all the women in the congregation, they're like, mm, yeah, yeah, we know what that <laughs> is. And all the men have this deer in the head like look of, oh, no, things are going to be different for a while. Oh, <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, so Okay, first of all, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Oh, don't be sorry. It just is what it is as part of I, life, right? I, right. I mean, it didn't happen to me in the same exact way, but I have experienced that, you know, exact same kind of moment of just being in a situation where you can't stop it and you can't control it and it's happening and you're in front of people and you're like, what the heck? 
and what do I do? And I can't see because my glasses are <laughs> fogging up. But you know, I will, what I will say is in the, in the moment, not so funny, but taking a step back and looking at it and being like, okay, kind of funny because it's part of life. It's, mm -hmm. it happens to all women, whether we talk about it or not easier to kind of process if you can see the humor in it mm -hmm. right and know that you're not alone like those women who were looking at you like mm -hmm. <laughs> I <laughs> I get it I feel for you I'm sure they were sending cool thoughts your way you know oh, and just yeah. knowing you're not the only one had to have been helpful even if they couldn't go up and fan you in the moment right sure and we had a great laugh about it afterwards Good. So I love all of the work that you have out there and, you know, keeping it cool when you're burning up inside. Ugh, that's just, it is what it is. It's a challenge, but you know what? You don't have to let it define you. Talk to other women because they have a lot of good ideas and coping mechanisms. And again, I love the humor in your account. Your book is on the way. It takes a while for things to get to us here. We're in the middle of a few cornfields in central Illinois, so the mail's kind of slow. Even when it's promised a delivery date within a certain window, it just takes a little longer here. But I, can't I understand wait to get that book. Good. But in the meantime, your Instagram account is getting me through. And I love uh, some of the things I've seen. Uh, don't laugh when your crazy showing or when things are just kind of unraveling all around you? Yeah, I like to say, you know, sometimes my crazy slips out. It just does. And I've seen it happen to my friends as well. And I've seen it happen to people in the grocery store. And if you can just kind of, you know, it's like you said, you kind of just, instead of judging it, you know, or trying to hide it, I think there's something about kind of calling it for what it is knowing you're not alone and being able to see some humor in it when you can. Not everything is funny, of course, but there's a lot that we just can't control that I think humor can help take the air out of. Yeah. And I want to circle back to something that you yeah. mentioned much earlier in the conversation about the tendency to suffocate those that are left behind. You mentioned your daughter went to college and your son was still at home and you had yeah. to figure out, okay, how do I love him without suffocating him? Yep. So, um, so yeah. So I think that as I talk about in the book, um, you know, my, my son was probably not probably, I know, cause we've talked about it, thought, <laughs> oh my God, what am I going to do when my sister goes to college? You know, I've got these two <laughs> on me all the time. And frankly, we were a little worried that we were going to suffocate him too. Can I show you one of the do's and don'ts from my book? Oh, I would so, love it. Okay, so here is one of the do's and don'ts in the book, and I'll read it because you probably can't see it all that well, but the do says, do tease your younger child that he will soon become the sole focus of all of your attention. And we're sitting in the living room and I'm texting him, what are you doing now? Ha, 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 hello, are you there? <laughs> and it's like a joke, right? Mm -hmm. The don't is don't actually suffocate him by materializing during inappropriate moments. And I'm chasing after him saying, is this a bad time while he's in the middle of a baseball game? I love that. This picture, he is literally running, ready to touch home plate. And Sharon is right behind him. Hey, is this a bad time? Is this a bad time? <laughs> is this a bad time? Love it. Exactly. So it was those kinds of moments that he was afraid of and we were afraid of. Did I ever actually run, chase him down and do that? No, I, 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 you know, for anyone who's listening, no, I did not run onto the baseball field and chase him down. Did I feel like I was doing that kind of thing sometimes? Uh, yeah, I, I did. I'm guilty. Hey Sharon, we are not TMZ. I am not going to drill you down for those details. <laughs> if no comment is appropriate, that's fine. I'm not going to dig underneath that. You just, that's fine. <laughs> Great. 
<laughs> so, you know, I just, it was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of trying to balance what's, you know, how you raise your kids and how you live your life and what's appropriate during certain times and what's not appropriate and, and all of that. So that's just one of my favorite examples of, you know, the ways I wanted to take all of my attention and just, you know, put it on my son and very guilty sometimes, like I said, sometimes not so much. And the good news is that we're able to talk about that stuff. And so, you know, I, I, people ask me all the time, like, are your kids okay with this kind of stuff that you show? And the answer is yes. I would never show, first of all, I would never show, I would never portray something that would make either of them unhappy. Right. If there's even a question as to whether or not it would be appropriate, I show it to them first. Very often they tell me it's not even funny enough. And, you know, this would be better. <laughs> you know, I, I like to joke that they're my unpaid interns as is my husband. Um, so yeah, so yep, they're and used to dealing the with ultimate me. betrayal. Your youngest went to college. I mean, how such he? nerve. Oh. He has such nerve. Just so wrong. I mean, that's the thing, right? It's like you give them everything, you teach them everything you can. You, you know, what you want is for them to grow up and be able to leave your nest and survive in the world and make their own impact and, and do all the things. And I couldn't be happier that that's the case, mm -hmm. but that's not very nice. Like what? You can't right. wait to get the heck out of here. How dare you? So it's a very weird thing. You're, you're thrilled that that's how they feel. And you're also kind of like, what the actual heck? Really? Yeah. You can't wait to get the heck out of here? I mean, just because that's why I'm raising you and what I'm preparing you for uh, do you really have to do it? Yeah. And, you know, of course, I'm sure they left most of their stuff at your house, though. Oh, totally. So the stuff they don't want, but I can't throw it away because oh, they might sure. want it one day. Right. So I just have piles of, you know, their junk everywhere, you know. So but you have free storage and you have free interns. So I, it kind of balances out. I exactly. Feel. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> it's true. So when things uh, were really kind of difficult for you, when you were really feeling all of those feelings and they were getting to be too much, you mentioned that you had friends that were going through the same thing. And were those relationships what sustained you during that time? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that being able to reach out to people but when you need it is a really big deal, right? And one of the things I talk about in the book is that, you know, often during that period of time, I was reaching out to friends who I knew understood what I was going through because they were going through the same kinds of things and maybe didn't completely reach out to the people that I didn't think understood exactly because that was just a little bit more challenging for me to, to have conversations with people who didn't get it. So I think that in life, if you can kind of figure out who can help you and maybe be a real pal for what you need to get through in the moment, that's a really good thing. And, you know, I think most people are happy to be there. I mean, when my friends need me and reach out to me and want to talk or whatever it is, love being there for them because it's nice to know that you're needed and you can be helpful and you can make somebody laugh and all of that. And I think sometimes we just have to remember that we can do that too. So yeah, I reach out, I reach out to friends and continue to reach out to friends all the time when I need to. And, you know, thankfully, I am able to reach out to my husband and my children, um, you know, and my family that that's a very big deal. And I don't take it for granted. Um, and just like I don't take my friends for granted. So yeah, and I'm, you know, I guarantee, I can promise you that just like I just told you about my friend who was putting together this big collage, I was saying and doing things that they were like, um, Sharon's finally lost it <laughs> completely <laughs> or no, don't do that. Or, you know, or, or whatever it was, but you know, that's life. That's how we get each other through it. Right. Not being alone all the time. So, okay. I want to tap into some of your brilliance. I have some thoughts for when my son leaves for college, Okay, and, you know, maybe a little bit of feedback. Do Okay. 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 So, uh, first of all, the big vinyl wall art pieces of me. 
so that love it definitely a do definitely a do absolutely in fact i'm going to show you a, See, that's um, what i thought and i thought i'd start with an easy one like that i think you should absolutely do that because i think there's nothing that kids want more than a big picture of their mother in college if you can see this one but that truly is one of my dues <laughs> it's it's on the don't side so i don't know that i really recommend it but but the do the do is help your child select some photos to decorate her future dorm room the don't is don't make it all about you and it is a an image of me saying look at the picture i made of us I made of us you can put it above your bed in your dorm and it's a picture of me and my daughter life size that i expected her to you know not really but expected her to put above her dorm so yes i completely relate to what you said yeah. <laughs> exactly isn't it all about you and your mom <laughs> well, of course of course and, and yeah bad ones that whatever we can get a little one of him too you know absolutely like, right <laughs> right okay and another one because yep. your wisdom is shining through here so i want to keep this going <laughs> a recording of me reminding him brush your teeth Make sure you use soap. And how many days has it been since you've showered? You know, just to, college is hard. There's a lot to remember and things are going to slip through. So I just thought including some helpful things like that, you know. How... Absolutely. I think you're brilliant. And I, I think you should do that. And I think you could, you know, record it and wrap it up and give it to him. Maybe make it his ringtone. See, this is why we needed this interview because I wouldn't have thought about that. Thank you, Sharon. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs> That's so funny. Thing, I thought that, um, you know, I would hate for him to feel homesick. So a pillow with all of our family together in a portrait, but screen printed <laughs> on his pillow. So when he goes to bed at night, he can just snuggle up with all of us. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. You have the book in you. I think you should take all of these ideas and put them together because I love it. Yes, exactly. I think you should do that. <laughs> okay. So pillow, vinyl wall art, and the recording. Yep. Sharon, thank you for, for all of this guidance. Absolutely. I know that this process is going to go so much better now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Hysterical. See, this is what comes from reading your Instagram account and laughing. <laughs> this inspiration for better. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to your son who's now going to have to put up with all of this. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You know what? That's good. It builds character, right? Well, let's hope. You know, time will tell. <laughs> Exactly. I love it. Now, going to college, when your kids go to college, that's one transition. But when a kid finishes college and then goes out and makes their way in the world, that's got to be another thing altogether. Yeah, totally. It's very, it's, it's so strange. And it's one of those things in life that you know, you don't, until you, until you live it, you don't know what it's going to feel like. You can't even really imagine what it's going to be like. It's, it's very strange because I really thought that, you know, you spent so much time thinking about them leaving your house and going off to college. And that's the, the really big change. And, but when they're in college, they're still in school and growing up and there are set holidays and summers. Now, whether or not they are doing an internship and they're not coming home or going on vacation with friends or whatever, that stuff of course happens and comes into the mix, but they still have a schedule, a school schedule. When they graduate and they are working, you know, it's different than that right? Because you don't get summers off and you don't get winter vacation the same way and, and spring break and all of those things. And all of a sudden there, you know, just there's a change. There's more, you know, independence and uh, responsibility and all the things, you know, jobs and where they're going to live and relationships and all of that stuff. So 
it's a big change, um, you know, different for everybody. That may be another book one day. We'll see. I, I was I just thinking that, it Sharon, I want to read a book <laughs> about it to find out, okay, do I move every time they move? Do I buy a house in the neighborhood <laughs> where they relocated for this new job? That's I love appropriate, that. right? That's absolutely appropriate. Yes. I love your sense of humor. Okay. I mean, well, you're, you're giving me ideas for my Instagram, you know, every time you say something. <laughs> I love well, it. I will be looking forward to the release of that book. You have a window of opportunity here before I'll need it. So no pressure. But, you know, None taken. if you could get started on that, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, motherhood is just all about different stages, right? And I think that, you know, whatever stage you're in, that's the hardest one, right? Isn't that what they say? Yes. You know, <laughs> it's when they're little, it's really, really hard. And then when they, as they start to get in, they go to kindergarten, that's really, really hard, right? And then, you know, middle school, it's just, it's whatever you're in, it's new, it's different. And even with your, you know, second or third or fourth or whatever, how many you have, it's different because they're different kids and it's different experiences. And, you know, it's a girl and a boy or an older and a younger or, or they're just different kids or whatever it is. It's always, it's always new and exciting. <laughs> it is. It is. And, you know, there is a pressing question that I feel I would be remiss if I left hanging there. Did your husband ever find where the forks are? <laughs> so um, I'm so glad you asked that. And with me staring at where the forks are, he was able to figure it out, but has definitely then asked me again, for sure. You know, even if not specifically about the forks where we keep the knives, I'm like, hmm, let's think. <laughs> Last week we discussed the forks. If you, if I were a betting woman, I think maybe <laughs> in the same place. So you know, it's you know, I think it's those kinds of things. Whether it's the husband or the wife or whoever you're living with or whatever that forgets all of these things. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think it's they're pretty common things that happen in many households that we can all relate to, and. You know, they can be irritating in the moment, but they're also pretty darn hilarious when you think about it. Absolutely. So, and you know, whatever partner you have in your life, they're going to have quirks. Luckily, we don't. So that of course. Makes it a little better to navigate. Because if both people did, well, that would just get complicated. You know, it's funny what it's funny what you just said, you know, what I will say, and it's true, like I like to joke around that like I don't have the quirks or, or like you just joked around. The truth is, I think part of the reason that my kids don't care about what I post, and when I say don't care, I mean, it doesn't bother them, they don't feel like I'm saying anything so revealing or horrible or judgmental, and my husband the same way, because generally speaking in my in my books at my book and in my posts if anyone's really being made fun of it tends to be me you know it's really myself that i am judging or laughing at or making fun of because it's i don't think that anybody else is doing anything so crazy or out of the ordinary or terrible or or any of that it's my reaction it's my <laughs> emotional you know thoughts that i that i'm judging and that i think are pretty darn funny and that i think that other people in my situation may be able to relate to absolutely and that comes through the best humor is the self-deprecating humor but it's especially if you have a healthy sense of self and you do have a healthy sense of self. So it's, thank you. You're, it makes it able to be enjoyed then knowing that you are who you are, but you can find all of the, the silly and the humor in these things. It makes life a whole lot more fun for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you know other people that get to appreciate it, it. Yeah. Well, thank you. And that's what it's all about, right? You know, when people, you know, the, the stories that you just shared made me feel heard and seen and known and good and included. And that's what I am hoping other people here feel when they hear my stories or see my illustrations, because, 
knowing that you're not the only one that feels this way is really comforting. It is. And the goal of this podcast is to encourage people who are facing difficult or uncomfortable life experiences to find the support and the inspiration that they need to lean into those things and to overcome them. And I think you're a great inspiration that when we can just take a moment, even if we can't, even maybe our situation isn't one that's humorous at the time, if we're fighting something that's, you know, an illness or something like that, but having that moment to just laugh. Yeah. Boy, that is such good medicine. Yeah, absolutely. And recognizing things for what they are. You know, one of the things that I talk about in the book is that I lost my mother to cancer 15 years ago. And she, we were incredibly close and it was awful. And I think that the letting go when my kids were going to college brought up some of those feelings of letting go. Oh, and sure. I talk about that. And thank God, and in a completely different way, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that some of those emotions weren't there. And I think that identifying it and kind of calling it what it is and being like, ah, you know, that makes sense, um, can just be really healing and helpful and get us through and, and realize we're not alone because other people go through it too. And even with that, step back and be like, oh, okay, I can see why some of the craziness and some of that. And laughing is a good thing. And my mother taught me to laugh. So that's a good thing. That's a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. And there's so much sure. truth there that each new experience in life kind of builds on those others that we've already experienced. Yeah. And there's wisdom that weaves through all of those. So. Yeah. Well, Sharon, this has been a blast. We're going to have to do this again sometime. But I'd love it. I would love to give you the last word today. So what would you like to share with folks as we close out the podcast? Um, well, I guess uh, I should. My Instagram is at Miserable Moms. I would love it uh, for anybody to take a look and join me on my crazy journey. Uh, the book is called uh, Miserable Mom, The Do's and Don'ts of Sending Your Kid to College. And it can be found um, either on Amazon at Barnes and Noble or on my website, which is miserablemoms.com. And, uh, you know, the biggest message is that we are all in it together and let's take a step back and learn to laugh. And, you know, that's, that's it. <laughs> Beautiful. And all of those links will be in the description in the show notes. So thank you, Sharon. Great. Be well, go out and enjoy your beautiful weather and thank we'll you. talk again soon. You too. Look forward to it. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.